SCP-3-36 has um, a few little interpretation things going on. This little notch, the steps, those are going to be a little bit complicated to, uh, to generate. So on the manufacturing side, this little uh, pocket that goes, assumes to be all the way through the part since there's not some other detail shown there. Um, you know, manufacturing this part with this square edge on the uh, the leading, and it will still be square because of the the round, because of the kind of the elliptical shape from the cut. Um, you know, pretty much this is going to have to be an EDM part to even get close to those geometries, or maybe this is a uh, an injection molded part, and we'll have a core going through, uh, or a um, uh, a pen to uh, to relieve that uh, that shape, but just strictly manufacturing it. There's uh, there's some shapes there that we would want to design review to make sure that we really need that geometry. All right, so we're going to start off with um, with our cylinder, and I think we'll go ahead and put in the uh, the lines and the uh, the geometry to um, uh, to make those cuts. So we're seven on the uh, the wall thickness here. And then eight from the uh, the step and fifteen to center. All right, so we've got got a few numbers here to uh, to work with, and then twelve from the base. All right, so new metric part. This one, because of the complexity, I want to stay in that same visual, so I'm going to go to the right plane. We'll draw a couple of circles, and then the uh, the sketch will be. Uh, 40 on the diameter. All right, and I'm going to use the middle scroll wheel to zoom up uh, a little bit. And I want the 7 on the wall thickness, so picking the inside circle and then picking the outside circle gives me that separation. All right, and then we have a line. And then the only thing I really want to watch out for is that it doesn't um, automatically or assume tangency. So another line for the piece. All right, so the two, two edges, well, we'll see how that stacks up. We have 12 to the base, so I'm looking for quadrant. All right, so it jumps automatically back to the, to the center. So we're going to do this uh, two ways. I'm going to just go ahead and, and select whatever it gives me. And then under the leaders, because I picked the perimeter, I'm going to have a min and a max condition. As soon as I pick the min condition, it's going to give me access to that geometry. Uh, the other line then was 8 millimeters from that line. Make sure I'm getting my selections. Alright, so that one's right on center line. And because we're at 40, there is a, I'm going to make this a construction line, or a center line, if it'll give it to me. There we go. And this will be where that, um, that angle comes down at. All right, so when I smart dimension, I want to hold down the, uh, the shift button. And from the shift... When I pick the center line, it's going to allow me to automatically go to that min condition. So when I place it, we're going to be able to put in the 15 without having to make that additional selection. All right, so that gives me my geometry. Let's um, let's start the extrude, and we'll see what we need for geometry. So I think I can get this region. Uh, this region, well, okay, so there's a place where the um, the center line is participating. And I really want to build all of this back, so I'm just kind of picking everything. Don't want to miss, well, well, I guess that was selected. All right, I guess we'll find out in a minute. <laughs> all right, so uh, looks like I am in inches, so this is going to be interesting. So this is a common uh, common issue. So 100 
and I'm seeing those inches and so as soon as I recognize that I'm not in metric that I picked inch uh, my inch uh, template we need to go back and um, and adjust so let's try the millimeters grams and seconds and when I double click on this we're gonna see some really big numbers all right so 304 203 and I need to edit the sketch and it got a little bit bigger so one of the first things I want to try is we have the editing to scale and if I scale about the uh, the origin my scale factor then will be 0.03937 all right and there's a bunch of other zeros but this will get us uh, get us close all right so maybe it scaled it but none of my dimensions changed so the problem with the scale is that it really didn't move anything so that being the case I want to display delete um, delete relations and I need to keep all of my coincidences and everything that is a distance or a diameter hold down the shift button there we go and I can delete those out that puts it back to where all I have are the the basic uh, relations all right so now when I pick this and scale the entities we're scaling about the origin and I'm at 0 0.03937 we'll go ahead and accept now I have a really tiny dot where the new geometry is at and it's still going to try and go probably to my dimensions all right so this shouldn't be too bad to go back and pull but we're going to have a slight scaling issue of 399992 I got it close but I didn't get it exact all right so 40 millimeters and, and so eight uh, eight millionths of a of a million millimeter there is not really a rounding error but uh, we can we can do better all right so and then if this was going to be um, I'm gonna say something in the uh, the mate or later on in the assembly that would um, uh, potentially cause us some problems uh, that small variation would um, would also be a be an issue all right so this is under defined I didn't see the 40 millimeters go defined so in the process of scaling or moving we sometimes lose lose those relations so I'm just going to drag that center point off and back the um, the, the shift let's see we had the seven millimeters All right, so 7.00026, and then I'm going to do the shift and to the line, and 12 millimeters, and we're out a few decimal places. So maybe just delete a few of those, and then the 8 millimeters to the center, and then shift, selecting the circle to the center line and 15 all right and I've recovered um, recovered the uh, the geometry all right so we go to isometric and it's still 100 inches long so it's about right 100 millimeters and then I just have to determine my direction all right so we get the we get that recovered I want to show this sketch and then the regions that I'm going to want to cut back 35 millimeters are going to be the flat and the, um, the shape. So I'm clicking on the sketch and we're going into the extrude cut. We're going 35 millimeters and then I can pick the two. So the center line uh, really didn't isn't really helping me here because I'm having to make those extra selections but 
and we'll go ahead and uh, and stay with it. All right, so now you can kind of see the curvature of that face coming down to the flat. And then uh, in the, uh, the geometry, we're going to go to the front plane and open up the sketch. And I'm looking for that that, uh, that center line. We're coincident to the top. And we'll rotate over. And let's see if I can go to the point. So the point is projected in. If I could, if I couldn't get the point, then I would go to the center line. Uh, but that would probably be a pierce, which we don't use pierce uh, too much in this situation. But pierce says that I have an object that is perpendicular to the plane, and where it passes through, or where the the sketch plane passes through that object, we're going to pierce at that location. So it's kind of a it's a it's a handy tool, but if we can stay with coincident, I think that's the better better choice here. So we'll go back into the the front view, picking my uh, my dimension. We'll go to 40, and then we're into the extrude cut as an open profile through all both. And the direction of the cut, the arrow is pointing down, so we'll flip the side to cut and create the other uh, shape. All right, so when I come back and hide the sketch, that cleans up the end geometry. We can see that it goes through. And pretty much the issue is these sharp corners and making that cut. If I don't have some kind of pull there or something that's capable of uh, making the sharp corners, this geometry is, is fairly complicated. All right, so that will give you the uh, how to correct for the metric if we... Uh, haven't uh, gone through that uh, lately and we're ready to save this one and move on to our next project.